There's a very interesting organization called Compassionate Friends. Now, uh, Lindsay and Margaret Harmer, they brought it to Australia for the privilege many years ago of uh, meeting the man, uh, an Anglican priest, uh, Simon Stephen. He started it overseas and they uh, wisely brought it here after their son died and uh, had the privilege on this very program to interview Simon some years ago. So I thought it would be most appropriate tonight uh, to pay tribute to Lindsay. That's uh, Lindsay Harmer and his wife is going to speak with us shortly. I had, I, I know we can overuse the word privilege, but, but I did have the privilege of uh, knowing them fairly early on the piece when they uh, found great solace and great comfort from uh, starting Compassion Friends here in Australia. And as I said, uh, they uh, invited the founder of that organisation overseas to come out. So I interviewed him on the program. So Margaret has very kindly agreed to share some thoughts about Lindsay. I had the privilege, I mean, it was a genuine privilege of knowing him and working with him in different uh, occasions and with uh, Margaret as well. So, Margaret, it's great to have you on the line. Hello. Hello, Father. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just a privilege that, um, you know, you, are, you have agreed to come on now. It's, yes, of course. It, but it's so recently... You were a great friend of Compassionate Friends, Father. Yeah, well, I you tried to be. I appreciated it so much. And I think because... I saw the value in the organisation which you brought to the country because so many people, uh, grieving parents, and um, as you found when you lost your son, yes, people are lost. They don't know what to do. No, we, it's a very, very tragic and terrible time for a bereaved parent after the loss of a child. And uh, a lot of them, you know, really struggle and that's why Compassionate Friends is such a, a lifeline to them. They come there and they make friends with other bereaved parents just like they are. And they really, they really relate. And also Compassionate Friends, of course, gives a lot of comfort to them through uh, groups and meetings and being able to drop into the centre, lots of literature and newsletters. And it just, it just where they're felt isolated, all of a sudden they feel part of it. Interestingly enough, um, how did you find out about uh, the organisation? Was then oh, well, overseas? it was strange. We had four years after Reese was killed by a speeding drinking driver on the Mornington Peninsula. We had four really horrible years, as you can imagine. That's right. didn't seem, we did try some therapists but nobody seemed to understand it at all and one day we just read a tiny paragraph about an inch big about compassionate friends in New York and how they helped bereaved parents and we both looked at each other and we said that's what we need that's what we've got to have here so the very next morning I went into the Herald and was advised to put a notice in the paper and I did that and we had seven bereaved parents that met in our lounge room and that was the beginning of the Compassion of Friends. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, I, 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 I'm a great believer in uh, God's providence, and I think uh, that was an example of that work. It that, was indeed, because yeah. it was something that we, we knew we needed, and we, we knew, knew that other people needed it too, and there was nothing at that time. No. And, uh, of course, uh, you uh, later on brought the founder of it out to Australia. Yes, we brought the founder of Compassionate Friends. He's now Canon Simon Stevens, an mm. Anglican priest of yeah. England yeah. who's worked all over the world. Uh, he came out and we did an, a pretty well an Australian tour. We did m many uh, country areas and um, we were able to get Compassionate Friends established in other states and other country towns and of course Lindsay did a lot of that too himself of course after Simon was only here a few weeks and Lindsay would be traveling away to the country very often yeah. when of course he was a pharmacist that's right in Glen Waverley for nearly 30 years and so he had to look after the pharmacy as well so he often didn't get back till about 3 a.m. and then started the pharmacy in the morning Oh, so it was a pretty busy time for us. That's right. I, 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 uh, I suppose I, I've had the privilege of, of 
meeting people like yourselves and being able to pass on that information to others. So it was it was great to to interview uh, the founder himself and uh, uh, you know to to, well, to to meet him personally and to meet you and uh, Lindsay and uh, yeah. uh, to to be f- fostering this. Uh, Oh, you've right always work. been tremendously helpful to us in our early days. You were always there and you would always come and give a talk to the bereaved parents and love them after the meeting and talk and talk. You know, you were you were wonderful. Oh, well, that's very good. But I, mean, I think it's... Um, I thought um, on, after we couldn't... I couldn't go to the farewell ceremony for... Lindsay, I thought. Oh, that's understandable. Yeah. Yes, he had his funeral on Friday. That's right. But I thought, and he's had um, terrible Parkinson's, irreversible Parkinson's for ten years, really. Yeah. But the last two years have been pretty bad, and he was in Broughton Lee Aged Care Home, where he was very lovingly looked after. And my daughter Wendy and I used to go um, just about every day, so he was he was loved and cared for. Yeah, but beautiful. I haven't told you that, unbelievably, another tragedy happened to us four years ago when our beautiful elder daughter, Rosalind, died of cancer. Oh. So she le- So we were pretty unlucky to lose two children. Yes. Uh, but she left a legacy of great courage and love and also a lovely husband and three beautiful children who are our great-grandchildren, mm-hmm. our grandchildren. Yeah. And from them we have another four great-grandchildren and three from Wendy, so we're very lucky. Well, yes, it's, it's, um, it's just great to hear that information because it, it just, to me, generates the atmosphere. I was, um, like yourself probably, shocked by those people be ki- being killed in uh, America. Yes. Uh, and 12 people. Dreadful, yes. It's just terrible. Compassionate friends over there will be very busy. That's right. They're a very wonderful organisation in America. Oh, that's good. And uh, I know they are, they're in all the cities and country towns and they're an enormous help to bereaved parents as, as ours is here. Because when we had a lovely drop-in centre in Sindel... And oh, you did too, yes. ...and very well. But then now uh, it's moved on to even b- bigger and better things. And... There's a lovely centre in Canterbury Road, Canterbury. That's right. Just opposite the Merced Melling Road shopping centre. That's it, right. So yeah. its aim is to support bereaved parents and grandparents and brothers and sisters. You have, so, a, you have a very valuable um, publication that comes out several times in the year. Yeah, oh, the newsletter, yes. Yeah. Isn't it lovely? It's really... And it gives such comfort to bereaved parents. They They wait and wait for that to come. Because it talks about people just like them. That's right. And, uh, you know, they feel where they felt so separated and different from other, all their friends, they suddenly see that other people are like them. Yeah, that's so if you know any bereaved parents, please tell them about it. There's a lovely, beautiful staff there, and they'd love to speak to anyone on the phone. They make them so welcome, and I know it would help and comfort them so much. Um. I haven't mentioned the fact that you and uh, Lindsay received the uh, OAM. Yes, we did. That uh, was a great excitement. Well, it was a recognition. Yes, though, for, really? for very sad reasons, really, wasn't it? I yeah. mean, I wish it hadn't happened that we didn't have to get the <laughs> have to get it. But that's the way it was, and we were very grateful for it. Well, I think it was good because there was a recognition... Uh, by the public of uh, Victoria and Australia, of course, but um, of the work that you've done, because um, I think that um, it, it's um, we don't look for praise, we don't look for recognition, but uh, it is very wonderful. I know I received the same order myself many years ago, and uh, it, it uh, you don't do the work you do for for honours, but if if you get an honour, well, it's a, a bonus. It's a very it nice is. Thing. It's a lovely bonus, and it's a lovely recognition of bereaved parents because they've been sort of neglected or they were you know and yeah. they didn't people didn't mean to neglect them but they they were awkward for people you know the yeah. people didn't quite know how to handle them and now they've got their own center and their own place with lovely staff to look after them when they need it 
and they've got a library. They've got everything that you could wish for. Yes, that's so I'm right. So I'm so proud of them and so pr- pleased and satisfied that our work is going on. Well, that's really, I think, um, a tribute to the fact that it's so beneficial to people and that's why it's continuing on so many... How many years now since you started? Uh, well, it's 41 years. 41 Believe years. Believe it or not, we had our 40th anniversary last year. That's right. And they've been a long 40 years. They've, you know, it's gone a lot of ups and downs with it. That's right. Uh, but however, it's all going well now. Well, that's very good And uh, we've, we're thrilled and Lindsay was so pleased to know that it was still going on so well. Oh, you must have been very And they've nice. got a beautiful staff of six, I think, there now. Truly, six. What we used to do pretty well on our own, they've now got six. <laughs> well, that's good. That's it's wonderful, good. Mm. yes. Well, look, it's just really lovely that you were kind enough. I know that, you know, you're, you're, you're still grieving because uh, you were so devoted. Uh, we were a devoted couple. You, we've been married 65 and a half years. You were a loving couple. And we've been totally... Totally close all that time. Yeah, are you right? um, I, And it, 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 I am going to miss him terribly because I went to see him just about every day and so did Wendy, my daughter, yeah. my only remaining child. And, you know, he knew that we, were, we loved him and that, but it was very hard when he went into care because he wanted to be home with us. Of course. So it's just one of those things we had to face and I know he's at peace now. I know he's with all his loved ones, and he's at peace and away from the discomfort and that of Parkinson's. That's right. Well, it's very beautiful that you've come on here tonight. I'm very grateful for that. And uh, hopefully somebody listening tonight maybe say, oh, I could uh, benefit from that. Oh, I do hope they do. I do hope they do. Maybe the listeners might know a bereaved parent who's struggling and be able to just pass it on to them. Would you like me to give you the phone number? I think that would be a very sensible approach. Okay, well, the Victor- it's all over Australia, of course, and they have a, they have a national line too. But this is the Victorian number, mm-hmm. 24-hour grief support for bereaved parents, 988 And the national number that you can ring from anywhere in Australia is 1300 064 068. There it is. So anywhere in Australia, people can ring that number and it will be 24 hours a day. And then the internet uh, address is www.tcfv tcfv Ah. for Victoria. Yeah. dot au, so they can look up loads of information on that. Sure, There's well, a lot on the internet. You've been most helpful. Oh um, well, so have you, Father. <laughs> we we were so encouraged by you, and we were doing that work. And uh, I do wish you the very best for your health. And I know you're grieving your beautiful sister too. That's right. You were kind to come to her. Funeral. Oh well, I I felt you were such a dear old friend that I must come, and I knew how much she meant to you. Uh, thanks, yes, She's so your very, twin, wasn't she? She was. Yes. But, at, but I think it's at times when you're in grief that you really know the people that care. Yes. And it's really beautiful that um, people do that, that uh, maybe a visit, a card, phone call, yes. whatever it might be. Doesn't it's, it make a difference? Oh, yes. yeah, it's really lovely, and I think... Uh, uh, it's what Jesus was all about, trying to spread love in the world. That's right, and, and I can promise you that Compassion of Friends does spread love. Oh, it really does. It's an incredibly loving. It just seems to be give the bereaved parents freedom to be themselves by meeting other people just like they are. That's very true. When well, they don't feel they fit in in other groups anymore, that's they right. will eventually get back to the other groups, but... At first, for a year or two, they don't. Oh, that's right. People don't know what to hit. No, to handle the people don't know what to say to them and they feel awkward and it's all just horrible. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Margaret, look, thank you very much. Many blessings to you and your daughter. And, uh, and thank you so much, Father. Oh, Many oh. blessings to you too. We'll catch up again. Thanks very okay, much. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks, Margaret.